Good morning, everyone. So the Compulsive Hoarding Project, it's an urban health initiative between the City of Vancouver and Vancouver Coastal Health. Um, when we began the project, we actually had quite a large group of organizations. We had housing providers like BC Housing, we had the city's own non-market housing, um, First United Church, and then we had some other interested parties like the Residential Tenancy Branch, uh, the Public Guardian and Trustee, and Coast Mental Health. So what we did for a year is we handled some different hoarding situations, lot, got a lot, you know, a lot of learning in about what our organizations uh, were all doing, what some of the challenges were that we were facing depending on where we were sort of in the spectrum of, of hoarding. Um, and I, I did say not just a TV show, and I do it for two reasons. Uh, if I speak with City of Vancouver staff, and they're from our engineering department, they know hoarding as fencing that goes around a construction site. So I'm just going to make it clear, it's not about that, it's about that. Okay? <laughs> So with the new insights and the new partnerships and really solid partnerships that we've managed to form over the past probably year and a half or so, we've actually um, sort of morphed our team down to a smaller team. Uh, I am one of the members as a property use inspector, but we also have someone from the Vancouver Fire Department and two dedicated full-time Vancouver Coastal Health staff. So we've got 18 months to run a pilot and just see what we can do if we are working in a much more focused way and yet tackling situations of hoarding using a broader approach. So the health and safety impacts, uh, what comes to mind for a lot of people initially, of course, is the fire risk. That, those are the obvious things. People have blocked exits. They have so much stuff in their home that it might take them a long time to get out. Um, the other thing to remember is there are people that also have to get into their home. So first responders, whether it's a fire department because there actually is a fire, uh, but more often it's uh, paramedics. Um, people are having emergency health situations, and those folks have to be able to not only get in, but they need to be able to get the person out. So some of the other things too, um, long-term health effects. If you can't, your home is so cluttered, you can't actually properly clean it. Air quality, things like that um, certainly are impacted in your home. Uh, harm to self and others. City of Vancouver is a, is a city that has a lot of multi-unit buildings. So if you're in your own freestanding structure, that's one thing. Um, but you're, if you're living in an apartment building or a townhouse, you're actually attached to other people and you're all essentially living in the same home. Of course, for the individual, you're talking about risks such as uh, falls and trip hazards, especially when you get to an aging population. But more importantly, and something that people don't really understand at first, the bigger impact is probably the social impact, those loss of social connections that they have to other people. Um, imagine if you had people coming to your home and they were repeatedly making negative comments about what you perceive to be your treasures and they keep calling it junk. So yeah, they become very isolated. So just to let you all know, uh, they're everywhere, okay? They are in every neighborhood in Vancouver. Uh, we had about 96 cases last year. I didn't bring the map today, but it does show that uh, they're represented all around the city. They are found in single family homes, apartments, uh, strata complexes, SROs, uh, you name it, they're everywhere. Uh, any and all levels of, uh, of economic and education uh, levels. Um, let's see. Yeah, like I say, a lot of people too have a, this preconceived notion that it's uh, it's something people that have maybe lived through a war or are on the lower end of the uh, the financial scale that they're hoarding these things because they have you know need to keep them all. But it's actually everyone. What we do know about uh, compulsive hoarding is that it is not just about people being lazy. That it is, while not yet officially a, a mental health issue, it is certainly related to lots um, anxiety depression, OCD would be a couple of those. Uh, certainly, we want to keep people healthy, we want to keep them housed, and we want to keep them safe in their housing. Um, one of the overarching goals, certainly for the City of Vancouver and for Van Vancouver Coastal Health, is to prevent homelessness. So anywhere that we can, we are intervening with landlords uh, to help prevent evictions. We're helping manage uh, getting the, the person to take some action in their suite. And I'm really happy to say that most landlords, when they call us, they are looking for help. They're not looking for assistance to evict. They're looking for help for that individual. So it's been very positive. 
certainly improving the health conditions uh, in that person's residence, but as well for their surrounding neighborhood. And a lot of education and awareness. So things like the TV show have really raised the public awareness, um, but we want to go further and what can we do with housing providers, landlords, stratas, and then within our own organizations, we have a lot of capacity building to do. Thank you, I think I did it in under three minutes. <laughs>